All right, so we have a 15 kilogram cart we're going to bring up the hill over the top and we want to find a few different things. We want to find the potential at the top, uh, PE. We want to find the work done in order to get it there and then how much force we needed to actually do that work up the hill and then we're going to find the velocity it has at the end. All right, so first things first, if we take our cart um, up the hill, we're going to find the potential energy first. So, all right, so potential energy is equal to mga mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So it's 15 kilograms times 10 meters per second per second times 20 meters. That's how tall our hill is. So the potential energy, 15 times 10 is 150 times 20 is 3 thousand joules. Energy is measured in joules. So uh, a potential energy equals 3,000 joules. So if the potential energy is 3,000 joules and potential energy down here was zero, if I assume that, I started on the ground with no potential energy, work is going to be the change in energy. And it ended with 3,000 joules of potential, started with zero. So the work that was done was clearly 3,000 joules. All right, so if we did 3,000 joules of work, and I want to know if it went all the way up this hill uh, along the edge there, how much force did I need to do that work? Well, not only is work the change in energy, but work is a force applied through a distance. I don't know the force, but I do know it is applied through 40 meters up that hill, and the work done was 3,000 joules. So if I divide both sides by 40 meters, I get a force of... 75 newtons up that hill which is less than it would be if I had to lift that cart straight up okay so now my cart uh, is gonna go all right so we let our cart go careening down the hill turning a potential into kinetic that potential energy is decreasing as it goes down turning into kinetic energy increasing as it goes down that hill we want to find how fast is it going now so kinetic energy is related to that energy of motion, one-half mass times velocity squared. So the kinetic energy it has now, all the way at the bottom of the hill, energy is conserved. So it's going to be the same amount of energy that we had at the top, because it's now all turned into kinetic. So 3,000 joules of kinetic energy, one-half times the mass, which is 15 kilograms, uh, times some velocity squared. We want to solve for that velocity. So that would be 7.5 times velocity squared, still equal to 3,000. Divide both sides by 7.5. Gives me velocity equal to 400. Take the square root of both sides, and this works out nicely to be 20 meters per second at the bottom of that 20 meter hill. There we go. So we found, again, let's follow the story. So we had our cart here in the beginning. We had zero potential energy. We did work, 3,000 joules of work, up the 40 meters, applying 75 newtons of force to get up to the top. It had potential energy of 3,000 joules. We calculated that first and actually did, went backwards to find the work. Then I went careening over the hill, turning potential into kinetic. And at the very bottom, it'd be going 20 meters per second if all of the potential turned into all of the kinetic. last but not least, at the end of all of that, with all of our kinetic energy down here at the bottom, eventually, all of that energy, if we apply the brakes, um, and those kick on, and then we eventually stop, and our kinetic energy is zero, where did that energy go? We haven't lost it, it's always transferred to something. Well, if we're applying the brakes, we're applying a force for a certain amount of distance, that's doing work, which is again changing our energy, but now it's changing it to um, heat dissipating uh, the energy as heat. So that kinetic energy is being turned into thermal energy. And then it stops. The end.